Good morning, and thanks for joining us uh, to this uh, session. I'm Philippe Kreef. I'm in charge of research project at the Eclipse Foundation with Maria Teresa, which is here. And uh, we'll, I will present with my, my Manon Midi, which is a community manager at uh, Enalin, which is an organization who is building and developing a Tulip uh, application lifecycle management tool. We will present you uh, how we use today Tulip and why we use today Tulip in Eclipse for our research projects. Please. Okay, thank you, Philip. So, um, software development is not really rocket science. Um, how they made impossible possible, whether it's about putting a man on the moon or software development uh, in a team, there are some key ingredients that are the same. So I'm not going to do a parallel uh, as uh, Mandy Wally as yesterday with Mary Curry, but uh, the parallel is just uh, with this feature. So um, whether you want to, to, to launch a very uh, awesome project as putting a man on the moon, uh, some ingredients are the same as a software development team. So you need, of course, daring, but imaginations to go out a uh, usual framework to create innovating uh, apps. Of course, you need skilled people, so you will need for a software development team efficient uh, good developers, but we will see that developers are not the only people uh, that uh, to be involved in a, in a team. Best of bread tooling. Uh, cutting edge tools are absolutely vital uh, to be efficient. We will share you good tips to have cutting edge tools. And co elaboration. But even though uh, we all know this, we continue to engage in behaviors we know it's not uh, the most efficient way. So I'm going now to give you five tips not to be efficient. Perhaps it will sound uh, familiar with you, and if it is, just put your hand and cry with me. <laughs> the most efficient way is to multiply email. Please send a lot of email to people. This is the best way to keep people informed about deadlines. Sure, they will immediately uh, do something and focus on what's hot. The second advice is to share only code. Yes, you are right. Source code is the heart of the project. But we will discuss it's not the best way to um, uh, uh, create a good culture of team collaboration. I you are going to share source code, but are you going to build the best product. I'm sure you have time to copy paste things. A lot of us like this, it's like a hobby. So um, it's not a problem to copy a bug status from your ID to an issue tracker or to launch manually build. Take your time and uh, do this step by step by hand. No need of documentation. With the new uh, agile approach, that's right, that the uh, aim is to uh, provide uh, minimal viable products already working, already running software. So no need of documentation. If I launch the software, it's run immediately, uh, lonely, so no need uh, uh, of files or manual or just share Google Sheet and it will be okay. And if you have not ready to use workspace to, to, to work, ask all your teammates what are their favorite tools and start working on your own with, uh, with it. And when it will be time to share, just cross fingers and it, fa and it will uh, happen normally. Is this sound familiar to you? No, lucky you are. <laughs> uh, 
Um, now, I will share here the secret recipe to you for uh, an effective team collaboration. No miracles here, I have to be honest. Uh, just a reminder of things you probably already know. But what's interesting is to see uh, how we can uh, concretely use the tools I will demo day after day. So, better, yes, share your project vision with project manager, developer, tester, and customers. That's really important to know why you are coding. Coding is cool, that's right, but understanding why you are coding, what's the final go or goal of the software you are building is really important. What your final users really want. So, um, gather together all this type of profile and um, uh, quit, quit your pieces sometimes to exchange to better understand them. So, put all these people in one single workspace where all people share the, the, the final goal of the product and each type of people um, will have its um, own tool to work, but the, the, the culture is, is, is shared. That's very important. To make people inform, um, the best way is visual dashboarding because uh, it's important to avoid uh, time consuming uh, repetition and email of uh, project status. So, use for instance a Kanban board. Have you heard about Kanban? Yeah? Okay. Visual dashboarding as Kanban board is a, a very simple way to keep pinpoint forward about project progress and hot activities. Even if someone miss a meeting, he go to the Kanban board and immediately know um, know what's wrong, what's hot, and uh, what uh, uh, where people need help. As well, charts as uh, burn down chart, velocity, or burnt uh, give a big picture view of the project status. Three, this is the most important thing. Work with integrated tool to reach end-to-end -end traceability. I will demo you how to reach traceability. Software traceability is really the key to uh, uh, achieve quality software. Integrated tool mean um, uh, link tools that will be able to exchange information forward and backward. We will come back to this very important notion just after. Four. Make your workflow clearer and automated. The aim is twofold. First, to move from what is ready release to clearer feature-driven release. And two, to eliminate manual tasks, time-consuming, and room for errors. So how to do? You probably use uh, source code uh, version control as Git, plug in with uh, Jenkins, that's a first step. Uh, don't forget code review the, with a Git pull request or, or Yarit server, but also the test management step. And make your workspace a reproducible template. It takes time to have a ready to use workspace. So, uh, Philip uh, is working on a research project template to facilitate uh, bootstrapping of new project. He's building and configuring a lot of things, permission, user groups, roles, workflow, dashboard, and uh, he will talk about uh, PDP4E project, that is the core of, uh, of a project that will uh, um, link to a workspace. So, please uh, ask Philip to get ready to use a uh, research project. So, we'll come back about the traceability notion and I will demo um, what it is and how you can bridge it. So, 
I'm here in a tulip environment. Here are all the modules activated for this project. So yes, there are plenty of it. This is the demo effect. Of course, you are not uh, forced to use all this tool. And I'm here for those uh, familiar with the Scrum approach in the backlog. Here are the release uh, ongoing. And what's traceability? Traceability is the ability to link a story or a requirement to the task. So this story has been split in several tasks. And immediately think um, to the test case, here a manual test and here an automated test. And I can answer, uh, thanks to the traceability, to the question, which test covered the story? So here, this is the first example. The second example of the traceability is this bug in this uh, release has been resolved, right. But what's the piece of code that patch this bug? Clicking here, I can access all the work item linked to this bug. I see there is a document, a git push, a build, and other artifact. Going to this uh, git push, I've moved from the Ulgi dashboard here to the Git repository here. I can understand uh, the code and see what has been changed here in the, in the code uh, uh, side, side by side differences. And here is it, the developer, uh, the commit of the developer mm -hmm. mentioning the bug in question. I can continue to browse all the life cycle of the development opening it again. So you have seen a link forward and backward now. That's very important to have the bidirectional uh, discussion. I can go through the Garrett code review. So clicking here. Sorry, this is just a screen cap. I'm not going to the Garrett server. But here in the Garrett uh, interface, I have the mention if the bug in question that have been reviewed and resolved here. Is that clear? Okay. I come back to the Agile dashboard and I'm going to show you uh, the test management link to the story we've talked about. I'm going to the ongoing releases. Here I, go, I can go to the deliveries and I can go through the test campaign that validate the release. Clicking here, I will switch from the Agile dashboard to the test management. As I mentioned before, uh, the Tulip test management uh, model enable to have a big picture view of all automated and manual tests. Here, I have a manual test, the blue one. And here, with the small gear icon, this is an automated test. With the manual test here, I can check which step is OK or not. And I can get the traceability of all the tests linked to all work items, all the, the artifacts. So this is the test execution I'm, uh, I'm running. This is the bug. And I can, can continue to browse all the life cycle of the development uh, of the product. So what's in this sprint? There are two story, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is the demonstration of the traceability, and that's really uh, uh, important to have uh, this in mind because this is the best way to improve quality software. So. This is the proposition uh, the Eclipse Foundation uh, shared to its member. Uh, you have at disposition uh, tulip.eclipse.org. Uh, it's a platform at uh, research projects and working groups uh, disposal. So uh, Philip will uh, now explain how concretely day after day it's uh, implemented in the PVP point project. Thank you. OK, so I was looking for a nice picture to explain uh, in a research project how people used to, to see the Eclipse ecosystem. And most of the time when you interact with them, 
realize that actually they see it as a uh, cathedral, that the ecosystem is building a cathedral where actually the basements are the train release projects and the tower are the working groups and other project specific domains. And, and they are on the side and, and at some point they want to reach it. They want to, to reach this amazing, amazing quality, professional environment and, and so on. So, and so when, when they invite us to some research projects, they are looking for this kind of support and tell us, how can you do guys to make uh, your project so sustainable? How can you do to, to, to build this kind of community around your project? So we need this kind of support to make our own research project sustainable. So let's dig a little bit more about what is a research project. So first of all, it's the duration, three, four years, no more. So most of the time, a research project after three, four years, most of the, uh, of the construction leaves. So it's very difficult to keep these guys on the project because they, they need funding to, to do some more research, or they are happy with what they obtain and they just go for, for a product because they are SME or for industries. You have to deal not with one organization like most of the time in Eclipse when you approach uh, project is pushing Eclipse there is behind projects there is one person on one organization here we have 10 to 30 partners organization even even recently I um, I was involved in a project a proposal with 40 different uh, organization it's a mix of different interests different people academics SMEs and industries they have really different approaches they have different concerns regarding the open source and so on they have to deal with public and, and private data, which is very, can be really painful when you use the default Eclipse tools because you know that in Eclipse everything is supposed to be public. And this guy wants to be able also to manage some private data like budget, for example. And, and actually, what we discovered after, I, I will say, a year or more, uh, that an Eclipse uh, res and a research project is not an Eclipse project. So initially we thought that, okay, Let's make it immediately an Eclipse project. It's not the case, and I will go far further uh, on this point. It's a project in the making. It might be, and we, we do our best to make it the full project an Eclipse project, but maybe it will be just some, some pieces of this research project might be a, uh, will be uh, some Eclipse project. Because it's built actually with uh, different maturity companies. There are some companies who are really mature, coming from research or coming from industry or from some SMEs. Some others are really, really research oriented and people don't want to invest more time on that. They are just trying to do a few things. And on this kind of project, most of the times, the first milestone they are able to ship and where they can share the code with others outside of the project, it's after the average is 18 months, sometimes 12 months when people are really ready and it can be relevant worse, they can go to 24 months. And what also we discovered, even if they invited the Eclipse Foundation to join the consortium, most of these guys don't know what is open source. So it's really difficult. We, we, you realize that they have some cliche in mind and they misunderstand some, some, uh, some important things. So when you show up and you tell to these guys, here we go, the Eclipse development process is very clear. You have a pre proposal, you have your proposal. So in your proposal, you explain exactly what you are planning to do, uh, which piece of code will be open source. Uh, you have to do some meter paperwork. You have to change the name of your project for some trademark issues. I will not go in detail on that, but it, it's an issue on some projects. Uh, and then after that, when you went through all these steps, now go for the initial contribution. But when you see all these steps, you realize that they can really start doing that only after maybe 12 or 18 months, not before. So what should they do until then? So what happens? This guy usually they, they start using some other tools first, so uh, from Jira tools, Redmine tools, to start working together. And so they are not under the Eclipse umbrella. Uh, they are not following any best practices, any uh, yeah, easy rules to, 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 to start thinking in a way that open source uh, works. And, and then when we ask them to switch to an other technology, to switch to Bugzilla, uh, to switch to our GitHub repository and so on, it's it's had to be a nightmare for them. So uh, we um, we were considering trying to find a tool which could cover all these aspects, and then at some point uh, I've been informed and by by when that we have this Tulip instance, which was mainly used by working groups so far, and it could be a good answer to this research project. So we want to with this kind of tool we want to 
remove this kind of pain uh, to try to, yeah, we cannot really simplify this kind of unexpected task. What we try to do is to inform people to say, hey guys, if you want to go open source, you will have to deal with this kind of uh, uh, task uh, and complexity. Uh, we try also to identify m motivation, if people are really motivated, because some of them are really not motivated at all. So we should not bother them, because finally they are showstopper to, to push the code in, in the open source. We are doing lots of education about the open source to try to explain them what is important in the open source. And, and I said also already, late of involvement, late involvement is, doesn't also help to make things happen in, in research. So instead of pushing Eclipse project, now we are more pushing to, to, to them to uh, promote open collaboration through Tulip. So they, they will um, host the world project. We try to host the world project. We uh, uh, teach them about uh, best practices like transparency, like openness, meritocracy. For example, a guy just forgot to reply to my mail when I asked who wants to be a committer on Eclipse project. He just forgot and then he shows up six months later. I want to push my code and cannot do it. Okay, but, but now you need to be elected. Why I need to be elected? I'm part of this project since the beginning. Yes, but the Eclipse project asks you to be elected. So people have to understand this kind of thing. So we, we explain we, we explain them now the, on the easy way, not, not a tough way like they had to do. And of course, we are continuing to do some community building and dissemination. So we have the chance to, to go not only on, on stay on the theory, but to, to, to apply in some practical um, exercise with the first project, PDP4E. These guys are building a, um, a project around GDPR, so I would not have time to go more in detail on that. So if you go to the research booth, we have uh, flyers, and we, I will be able to pitch about that. And David, who, David, who is, is here, he will be also happy to pitch about this project. Uh, but uh, it was, was for us a great opportunity because they asked us, okay, guys, can you hold, uh, uh, host the whole project? And I said, okay, let's try with them first uh, and see how things are going. So in Tulip, uh, Manon mentioned a few things to you, uh, but it's a very pretty complete uh, application lifecycle management tool where you, have, you retrieve all the needs that you have to, to support a whole, a whole team, not only developers, but a whole team. And, uh, and for some uh, reasons in Eclipse, uh, we are not allowed, so they have some Git capabilities, but uh, for now Eclipse considers that uh, all the code has to be stored in our own repository, cannot be stored in a Tulip instance. So for this reason, we had to, to mask these features and go to a, a dedicated Git. But as I mentioned, this uh, uh, Git stuff, you need to be a committer, you need to go through the IP review, and so on, so it's a, it's a sh 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 showstopper for these projects. So again, uh, talking internally, uh, I discovered in Eclipse that we have what we name it Eclipse Labs. Eclipse Labs is a, it's a place under Eclipse where actually you can store your code and it, has not, it doesn't need to be clean in terms of IP review. It's just you take the commitment to make it clean later on. And so we create a separate, uh, separate uh, instance of that, maybe the Eclipse Research Labs, where actually people can start the pushing the code uh, freely. And we have some uh, and some stuff. So after that, in Eclipse, you have, uh, sorry, in Tulip, you have this, this way to, to select the, the different services you want to use. You can even extend, so you can add your own, uh, own services. For example, this GitHub Research Lab, I added uh, some continuous integration if I want, some uh, MetaMost uh, link, and so on, so I can uh, configure that. Uh, here is uh, the Kanban we use. We, it's, we can customize trackers, which is very important because these guys, not if they are doing development, they are doing development on their own team and they don't want to be bothered with a sort of joint development for now on projects. So, but we try to explain them already. They can collaborate together at least through some uh, common artifacts. And we create this kind of artifact like a deliverables, which is very uh, well, well known artifacts in this kind of project and we, they can follow the progress. And by the way, I, I have something to deliver by the end of the month, so I will not be able to stay too long with you guys. Um, but anyway, so and uh, so we have a document um, management uh, system as well, where we can organize our stuff uh, pretty easily. They are making some progress on, on this aspect, uh, Tulip, but uh, with uh, web dev, it's pretty easy to manage. And we have the link to this uh, research lab with the uh, GitHub a repo where people can really start delivering their code as, as soon as possible. 
it doesn't slow down their process, and they start doing open collaboration under the Eclipse umbrella. Uh, so, as uh, Manu mentioned, uh, the idea behind that is to have, at the end, uh, a first template that we will be able to reproduce. We are building a process for a research project, which is not a Scrum process, which is not a, any other Agile process. It's a, a specific process for this project, which not too many constraints, but some, some important things to do. And once everything will be set up for the next research project, we should be able to directly uh, implement the new um, new process using some existing template that we, we were building previously. So it's very helpful to have this kind of feature instead of resetting everything from scratch all the time. So to conclude, uh, yeah, just on time. Uh, no, we wouldn't have more time than that. OK, to, to conclude, so uh, with Tulip for us, uh, People can work under the Eclipse umbrella. It's very important for us. It, it feels they are really part of our community, so they are more can be really more active inside our community, instead of being staying in their world in Redmine or Altesian world, and then later on maybe decide to come back, and then it's a nightmare because most of their documentation is already stored on the other one, and they don't want to move it to to, to Eclipse. Uh, we can start teaching them open source best practices, uh, and we can like that promote, but we don't have to enforce Eclipse development process if they had to, to create directly an Eclipse project. Uh, and we use actually this, this aspect is something that was, was pretty new in our understanding of how wor uh, works a research project. Because of the maturity, because of the motivation of the different people in the project, we realize that we cannot force everybody to go open source. We cannot force them to, to this single huge project to be a big Eclipse project. It doesn't make sense because you will always have somebody for some political reason, for some motivation reason, who will decide to not go open source, and it, it will slow down everybody else when sometimes you have really cool uh, golden nuggets in this project. So what we do, we try to identify these golden nuggets and help these guys going through all the, the process to, to, uh, to be a compliant with Eclipse development process and to be a real Eclipse project later on uh, on, on their own. That's it. Any question? Sure. Mikael. Um, so sometimes I, I have the feeling that when I talk to other people about uh, becoming uh, open source or even an Eclipse project, um, they think they might lose control. Because uh, when, you, uh, when you are you simply set up your own, uh, I don't know, GitHub. So it's true for it's, it will be true in, if you do uh, use one of the Eclipse Lab or Eclipse Research Lab, you, you keep the control. Uh, it's not true. That's true when you when if you move to the a Eclipse development process world where there is a strong control, you have to go through all this IP review. You cannot push like that any kind of bunch of code. If you 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 yes you push lots of code, it automatically it throw a flag that the the IP team need to review your code to be sure that there is the code is clean or clean enough, so uh, this kind of thing. So if you want to uh, suggest them to start dealing with open, with open source and with the Eclipse world without this kind of constraints, then that this, this kind of Eclipse Labs environment exists today, and you are more than welcome. And then people will feel that they can start working in, inside our ecosystem instead of staying on, on their own on, around these 85 millions of other uh, GitHub repositories. So you can do that in research or not in research. Make sense? Or did, does it answer your question? Uh, yeah, partly. So uh, because also I did, did not quite understand. I mean, I've already had a GitHub, for instance, the linking of, of tickets, uh, milestones, and, and um, uh, yeah, referencing from, from commits to tickets and things like that. What exactly? Uh, okay, I'd like to answer to this one. Yeah, um, you would like to understand the what uh, Tulip, uh, what are the additional functionality Tulip has, right? Yeah, so 
I, I see Canva boards and, and, and uh, document management, mm -hmm. but um, as far as I'm concerned, I, I see I, I have to start with a few items, and a few items are the most important because they were the root of this project. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I rather start low when, yeah. when I have a lot of not so important of sources to do. As I mentioned, uh, for demo reason, th this project is, is really big. You have lots of uh, modules uh, activated. But if you want, you can um, use all um, the trackers and Git and stop it here. So to start, just uh, activate the, the, the must-have tools. For instance, a Kanban and a Git. Then, when people uh, mature, activate step-by-step -step additional tools. But what is important is to uh, start with a complete environment. So when people will evolve, will be ready, you will have a ready-to-use full complete uh, environment. So if you start just with a Git repo and with a notification issue tracker, how are you going to manage your documentation? How are you going to manage your test? Where will be your, your, your first door? If you have tools disseminated, where is the sum up? But could I start with a simple GitHub and add two minutes later? Because I have all the issue tracker and, and, and the protocols already there. Yeah, do you want to migrate or to link? I, I don't know, migrate to. I mean, or can two minutes simply suck up the information? Yeah, yeah, using okay. Zapier, for instance, uh, you you can uh, move your your issue if you want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it does not only at the front end, but it, it really migrates them from the GitHub to. If you want to, but if you don't want to migrate, as Philip mentioned, you can use the Tulip tools that are not available in uh, GitHub, for example, and have short link. I know it's your, and have short links linking to your GitHub. So wh what's important is to say your teammate, okay, if you want uh, to know uh, what happened in your project, go here, not go here to see that, go here to see that. And you have a connector, I think, also with, with Bugzilla, for example, yeah. right? It's, it's something new. Yeah. And it's not new for you, but it's new for us because we migrated to a recent Bugzilla version. Mm -hmm. So now you can manage on both, on both worlds, from the Tulip world, or from Bugzilla, and they, will, they manage the synchronization between both worlds. For the transition, you can have both for the moment, and uh, when you will set up a new project, you will move to Tulip, for instance. Now, I, I, yeah, I think that I know that for Eclipse, you can uh, in, import some external Tulip uh, repository with our issues inside uh, our own organization. Can you do the same thing in, with, uh, with Tulip? Uh, I don't think so because for the moment uh, repository are not uh, allowed. On yeah, yeah, uh, but not in general in Tulip, not in Eclipse, not in Eclipse Tulip, but in, in, in your Tulip. Yeah, yeah, you can you can yeah. be plugged to, to third uh, uh, or external yeah. repo. Mm -hmm. Because some feature are not allowed that we have that we cannot use in Eclipse, which makes a little bit the traceability a little bit broken. Cut. Yeah. yeah, cut at some point, but we are working on that just to. to see how we can make things happen. It's more it's an issue with committers. The fact that the role of committer should be managed is managed only at one place in Eclipse. So we don't want to allow an, an, an admin guy from the from Tulip to be able to change the committer roles and just let have their body to, to deliver some code when it's not allowed to do that. So it's for one one a strong blocking point today and we need to find a solution to Mizena now we need to be sure that they they, they respect our key message is to know, uh, uh, is to uh, make you aware that uh, you could do better in the future. <laughs> and you know that, ex that uh, a tool exists to have a complete uh, project lifecycle. More questions? I have a project and I 
Next to it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. I forgot to mention that Tulip is full open source. <laughs> is Tulip is full open source. <laughs> yeah. But I forgot to mention it. Small <laughs> detail. Okay, thank you very Thank much. you.